morning, church, and happy Sabbath to all. Good to see you all this morning. Isn't that God is good? Amen. Who, uh, he brought us here in, in the house of the Lord today, and uh, uh, we serve an amazing God and an awesome God. Amen. And um, well, let's sing our... Um, it's not an opening song. Our song, the vocation. I can honestly say I was encouraged and I, I can even say blessed by today's uh, Sabbath school. So thank you to all who participated and, uh, and to my wife for leading that out. That was, uh, that was one of our best, I can honestly say, that I've, I've personally benefited from uh, so far anyway. It was fantastic. So I, I strongly encourage you that are watching online, um, I hope you're able to participate and if you weren't, then uh, perhaps next week. Uh, a few announcements here this morning. Um, I don't see who I wanted to see yet so far, so I'll skip that for now. Uh, there will be a memorial service for Shirley Blank uh, at the church here at 6 p.m. on uh, this coming uh, Friday here. Uh, the church phone directory. For those of you that want an update to the directory, uh, please see Cliff. Cliff, uh, I don't see Cliff. He might here, be here later on. Uh, and if you're a first time um, into the church, then uh, don't worry about it. There's a little uh, $3 cost, but don't worry about that. Uh, our walking club, uh, tomorrow morning, Fairfield Island Park. And that starts, is that 8.30 now? Is that, it's 8.30? Okay. Okay. Um, today, the Hope Church uh, is having a potluck there at the Chiam Wetlands. Uh, for those of you that want to join them, um, just after church, uh, starting a little after 1 o'clock, you can bring your, your camping chairs and, and your, uh, your food there. There is a baby shower uh, for Iris, uh, little baby Iris. So if you want to able to join Marvin and Sarah, that is tomorrow, and the address is in your bulletin there. So that would be appreciated. Um, and I'm told that uh, Val's sister is, uh, is having some problems, uh, some heart problems, is that correct? So if we can remember uh, Val's sister in our prayers, that would be muchly appreciated. Yeah. We talked this morning about the power of prayer. And um, uh, I'm the recipient of that. Norm is the recipient of that. Many, many of you probably are as well. And there is no accounting for how God works. And we talked about his timing and how funny that works. You know, timing is, um, you know, it's a struggle because we're in that crucible. But um, the people that are suffering or, or, you know, in trouble, maybe they're not aware of that time frame that's going by. Like, I wasn't aware of that month when I was laid out. And, and Norm was in the same situation. Your time, you're, you're kind of out of it. But the people that are around you, uh, it's a time of growth because you're forced to reckon with reality. This is uh, a very real situation that you're dealing with. You can put your trust so far in modern medicine, but 
for those of us that are believers, this is a time for us to let go, step back, and put our trust and faith in God. So for Lori and, and my wife, um, and for those that are close, it's, it's a time of um, refining, because it forces you to, to kind of say, okay, Lord, you know, it's like the game of poker. At some point, you have to put all your chips on the table and say, I'm, I'm in, I'm all in. Otherwise, what are we doing? You know, you can only sit on the fence so long, right? So, uh, while we're on the topic of prayer, um, I don't know, but I, I understand that uh, there is a serious fire going on in hope. And um, I probably the whole of hope is under evacuation alert. Um, I was told this morning that uh, last night the firefighters were out battling it and uh, they had helicopters, firefighters going at it and when darkness came they had to stop and uh, Lori was saying there was eight fires they could visibly see on the hill actively burning that night and they prayed and they said, Lord, you know, help us, protect us. Um, do what you can to contain that fire until these firefighters come back today and tackle it again. And when they woke up this morning, it had not engulfed the hillside. It had not taken over. It was relatively the same as, as when it was the night before. So that is, that is fantastic. So we want to we lift up uh, those firefighters that are keeping our community safe. And uh, we pray for the people of Hope and, and our brothers and sisters. Uh, next week, there will be no potluck. Um, instead, we are having a communion uh, service next weekend. So we encourage you to come and attend and, and discover what that's all about. That is uh, quite a blessing there. Uh, at this point, we'll... Actually, I, I, I'll say it now. Um, we talked about, in the, in the lesson study, we talked about patience and how tough that is for us. And when I think about patience, I think about... <clears throat> what are we doing in those times to be patient? And it requires self-control. And self-control to me is not, you know, immediately I think, well, self-control is about, oftentimes we say, you know, get a hold of yourself, you know, because someone's angry or, or someone's, um, you know, losing their cool and they're, they're saying things maybe they shouldn't say. They've lost control. So self-control to me is, is, is key in here. <clears throat> and I was reading through something in Desire of Ages, you know, and the more I, I kind of glance through here, because I like to go, you know, when we have a, um, a scripture reading, I like to read the verse before and the verse after, kind of get a bit of context as to, you know, what they're talking about. And so the same with the Desire of Ages, man, I got to read this, I got to read this thing from start to finish, because it's fantastic, it's full of stuff. And I just want to share something very quickly here. The highest evidence of nobility in a Christian is self-control. He who is under abuse or cruelty fails to maintain a calm and trustful spirit, robs God of his right to reveal in him his own perfection of character. Lowliness of heart is the strength that gives victory to the followers of Christ. It is the token of their connection with the courts above. So I just want to share that with you. Thank you. Elder uh, Rick, and I uh, just want to read in Colossians 3, if I can find it, sorry, Colossians 3, character of new men. Okay, Colossians 3, verse 12 to 17. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on the tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must must do but above all things put on love which is the bond of perfection and let the peace of god rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and 
be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in, all, in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Amen. May God bless us as we sing praises to God. And there's sunshine. Our song is there's sunshine in my soul today. Shine in my soul today, more glorious and and bright than glows in early early sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, the sunshine, bless the sunshine when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in the soul. There is music in my soul today, a carol to my King. And Jesus listening can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh,
I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was dead by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Was it first cry that I had done? He grown up on the tree. Amen. Beyond the green at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. A drop of green can be. Of love I know. He, Lord, I give myself away. This all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was dead by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Amen. Amen. Please kneel with me, um, those who are able to kneel. and merciful Heavenly Father, as we have just sang, we pray, Lord, that you will, you will open our hearts to hear your, your words, Lord, your message. We will feel your love. We will not harden our hearts, Lord. Open our eyes and our ears to our brothers and sisters around us, next to us and in our community, our neighbors, that we may see their needs, and with your grace, Lord, we will be able to meet that need, done so in love. So we humbly ask for your blessings upon this service, Lord. We are here to, to honor, to praise, and to love you, Lord. So we ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Our tithes and offerings this week are for world budget. If we can have our deacon stand, please. Lord, we humbly come before you. We have been blessed. We have been given much. And we ask that whatever we choose to give back, that we will do so with a happy and joyful heart. We pray for your blessings upon these tithes and offerings, Lord, that they may go to further your cause and your will to bring others to you, Lord. This we pray in your name. Amen.
time for our children's story for the little ones that want to come up. Lori is giving us our children's story. Lori and Norm. God's younger children here at the front, God's older children at the back. There's a lesson, there's a lesson in this story for everyone. And at the end, I'm going to ask you what you got out of the story, the most important thing, okay? Okay, I've got to do something here. Get this all set up here. I'm going to try this over here, put it in the middle. Like this here, here. There you go. Take this player thing over here and get this set up like this here. Here like that. Okay now, let's see how does this thing I gotta just check this out. I'm gonna plug it in. Let's turn this off. Oh. I I was just the clock the air smoke and it 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 smells like sulfur what did what have you done do you kids want to hear the rest of the story well I'll tell it to you a long time ago in 1999 which isn't so long ago um, pastor Stan and Gloria that's me we were doing meetings in Papua New Guinea in the southern highlands in a little village called Mendy and you know what? We were so excited because we were going to have some meetings and tell the people about Jesus. They'd never heard about him. They didn't know that he could forgive sins. They didn't know that he loved you. And so we we're so excited. And we had a whole group of people come and help us. And they were from the States. And guess what? What do, what do we have to bring when we have meetings? What do we have to bring? We have to bring Bibles and sermons maybe some medical equipment to help them get well, right? And what about, what about your teeth? What would we bring for that? Dental stuff? Yeah, we brought it. And you know what else we brought? We brought a video cassette recorder. Have you kids ever seen one of these in your house? No, they haven't seen one of these in their house. <laughs> well, when I was a young mother, I would press this button and I would get a cassette out. Have you ever seen a cassette? The older ones have. Well, this is how we had music in our home. And our, I had a bunch of kids, and we had music going all day long. This is what we used. Anyway, they had a more fancy one because they could show pictures on a screen. So it was a video cassette player. Now, you see our nice screen here today? It's got white all over it. Well, they didn't have a screen like that. They just had big plywood boards, plywood boards, and they would paint them white so then they could show the pictures of Jesus on there, you see? And so then they had to build a tent. Where are they going to meet? So they met in a tent. And you know what happened? They didn't know how many people would come. But guess what? 2,000 came, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people came to the meeting. They had no idea it would be so many. And you know what? Only half of them could get in the tent. The other half had to stand outside. And guess what happened? The rains came and soaked the people that were standing outside. But you know what? They didn't care. They were so happy to see pictures of Jesus and wild animals. They'd never seen wild animals in their place where they, where they lived. And so... They were going to go see polar bears and lions and tigers. And they were so excited. It was like candy to them. They'd never seen anything like this before. 
And so they got busy. Pastor Stan and Gloria, we would visit the villagers every day. And then at night, we would have pictures of Jesus healing the sick, walking the Lake of Galilee, um, dying on the cross. And then in the end, they would have another video of wild animals. You see the lion? They'd never seen a lion before. And, and uh, deer and elk and, and gorillas. They'd never seen gorillas. So they were just stupefied watching all this on the screen. Look at the polar bear. They'd never seen that. Well, neither have I, really, in my backyard. But they have never seen these kind of things before. So they were so happy. Well, one day, they were in her, their hotel room, and uh, we, Pastor Stan was going to see if he could um, just try and see if the video was in the right place. Well, I want to see if it's, if it's going to work properly for tonight's meeting, Gloria. Okay. Okay, so well, I'm just going to take this Just here, make sure. Just go and get ready. I'm going to turn this switch on. Oh, fire, fire. What are you Gloria. doing? What have you done? Look at that. Oh, no. We, I, pushed, I pushed the wrong we, switch. I put 220 in there. I should only put 120. Oh, no. I got to put oh. that fire on. Stand back. You fried, you fried my cassette player. We need that for fire tonight. Extinguisher. The people, the people are coming tonight. What are we going to do now? Oh, there's God. Gloria, there's only one thing we can do. We have to pray. Yes, we have we to have pray. We have to pray. So you come over here, and let's put our hand on the... Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, you pray. I'll pray. Thank you, Gloria. Lord in heaven, Jesus, we so wanted to have this video cassette player working tonight for all the people that came. We pray, Lord, that you will work a miracle and fix this machine so everybody can see the wild animals and see Jesus on the screen. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we have to have faith that yes. this will work. Do you think God works with electronics? Does he do miracles with electronics? Do you think he can? Well, let's take it. Let's take it down and We'll go tonight and we'll go to the meeting and we'll tell our team what you did. It was very foolish of you. Yes, it was. And you fried the thing, but you know what? We're going to go know. in faith and we're going to see if it'll work, okay? Yeah. So next time I'll let you do it. Okay. 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 Let's go down. We're gonna go okay. down to the meeting. Okay. So we get to the meeting, and guess what? Okay. We All start right. singing. What do you do in a meeting? You start singing, right? We always sing. So well, we, they sang. We need this going, though, don't we, Gloria? Yes, you will. But it. Well, let's wait. We have to pray, and sing, and pray, and then we'll show the video. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. I just want to see if it's gonna work. I'm okay. so excited. So it came time to press the button on. So we press the button on. Where is it? There it is. It, there it is. Oh, <gasps> it's worked. Working. It worked. We showed the video one of, of one. Jesus walking the Sea of Galilee and doing all his wonderful things, how much he loved you. And then we saw all the animals again. There they are, tigers, gorillas, elk. They were just so happy. And you know what? Every night it worked. It worked the next night. It worked the next night and the next. And then the meetings were over. So let's go home. We've got to take yeah, the thing let's home. Let's take it back home again. Away okay. We go. Let's home. see if it'll work at home. Okay. Oh, I'm tired. Should I try it in the morning or should I try it now? Well, let's try it. Okay, let's try let's it. Let's see okay. if it'll work. Okay, try it, Gloria. Okay, I'll press the button. Clunk. It quit. It never worked again. That was it. It never worked again. So praise God. There is a village in Papua New Guinea named Mendy. And you know what they do? They, they sing to the God of heaven and they pray to the God of miracles. Thank you for listening. Okay, I want to ask you now. What was the most important thing of this story? You, t you tell those older children back there, what did you learn? What was that? Sorry, Nate. Don't let your children know. Well, that's a given, isn't it? Okay, what happened when we prayed? Miracle. That cassette player was fried.
220 went into it, it blew it right up. But God worked a miracle, and it worked for the meetings, and then that was it. It did its purpose. Young people, grab your baskets. Thank you, children, for listening. Thank you so much, everybody. And when's the best time to pray? Right away. Don't put it off. What are you waiting for? We're supposed to pray without ceasing. And I, you know, when I, I think about that, I, I think, okay, well, you know, traditional prayer is one thing. But then I discovered as I kind of got older, I, I discovered that you can drive down the road and pray. Eyes wide open, smiling, looking at the people driving around you, and they have no idea what you're doing. But they just see some guy in a car talking to himself and... You know, whatever. But I guess in today's world, it, you can get away with that with Bluetooth and all that sort of thing. But it's fantastic. Jayla and Maddie are going to bless us with uh, special music today. There we go. It works now. Hi. So we have special music today, and we wanted to share a song with you guys that we learned at our summer camp this year up in Hope. So this song's called Love Lifted Me, if you guys have ever, if you guys have ever heard it. But it's a little bit different than probably what you guys have known. There are actions to it this time. If you guys can participate, we strongly encourage it because it's a really fun song. We sing it almost too much. Yeah, so we have a story that goes along with this. So at our summer camp, one of our counselors, Julie, Maurice, and Moises taught us this song. And throughout almost the entire week, the entire cafeteria, you could just hear this song being sung until our counselors had actually told us to stop singing it because it got so annoying. So we'll teach you guys the actions. So the first part of the song, it goes along to the same tune as the chorus, which How many of you guys know the song? I know my mom does. She mentioned it to me. I'm like, you probably don't know it. And she's like, I do know it. All the youth downstairs know it, but they're still in their class. Yeah. So we'll teach you guys some of the actions because we've got chairs up here. So the first part of the song is, so it's lean forwards, lean backwards, to the left, to the right. Stand up, sit down, to the left, to the right. And it's just that like a few times before you get to the chorus. And then as the chorus goes, you continue to do the movements. Is that cool with everybody? If you get confused, everyone did. Oh, yeah. If you get confused, me and Jayla are doing it. And if the youth manage to come upstairs at some point during this, they Uh, can help. When we first learned this song, everyone kept bumping into each other. It was kind of hazardous. Because, of course, of course, them being teenagers, nobody knew their lefts and rights. (laughs) Including me. And me. I still don't know my lefts and rights. I have to do this every time I need to do something. All right, so we shall get this song started. We don't have lyrics, so if you know it, just sing along. Maybe teach other people. All right, everybody ready? Okay, so we start sitting down. Ready? Lean forwards, lean backwards, to the left, to the right. Stand up, sit down, to the left, to the right. Lean forwards, lean backwards, to the left, to the right. Stand up, 
pass it down to the left, to the right. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. And that's the song. Now you guys learned the song. know it. So if we ever sing it again, we won't be the only ones doing it. <laughs> Thank you very much, girls. Corey and Diana have our scripture reading. Now, is it Diana or Deanna? Deanna. My apologies. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading for this morning is found in Matthew chapter 27, verse 32. That's Matthew chapter 27, verse 32. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. Amen. <laughs> I don't know if many of you know, but Corey and Deanna are very new to our church, and I'm strongly encouraged to see participation. I know um, Deanna got up the other week and was singing with the, uh, the praise team, and we're all very encouraged by that. So uh, I want to say thank you very much for jumping right in right away and coming up and, and playing a part in the service. It's very encouraging to see, and, and it, I know it's uh, beneficial to you as well. And for those of you that think, well, you know, they're new and they're young and, you know, they're full of energy and they want to get involved. I, I, I got to be careful what I say here. But, uh, you know, I want to turn to someone who has been here for over 50 years. Is that correct? Our very own Lori Trayer. Over 50 years she's been attending this church. Over 60 years. I, I didn't want to get too carried away there. <laughs> you don't look it at all. So I, I try and save myself there. But, you know, for, for someone that's been here for so long and she's still a very joyful spirit helping out with our... I love it when you're, when you're also on the piano as well. But participating as well. So it doesn't matter your age group or, or you know, new or old or, or new to the church. We really in, are encouraged when you come up and, and you participate. And uh, for these young girls, uh, teenage years are very susceptible to, to the world. And so I'm very encouraged by Maddie and Jayla. Thank you very much for coming up and singing. That, that you got more guts than I do, I tell you that, because I'm not going to sing up front. But, um, and you know, the other day, I think someone mentioned that, Maddie had mentioned that um, after a period of time of, of not attending, she came to her mom and said, you know, I, I think it's time I started going back to church. Amen. And, and for a young woman to stay, say that, that's, that's heartwarming. So... That's very encouraging, and we're very proud of you for making that, that stand and that statement. So thank you very much. I'll turn it over to Jorge. Thank you. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Um, as uh, Elder Rick says, uh, we're so grateful for the people participating from the praise team, uh, the children's story. There is power in prayer, right? Amen. Um, uh, for the special music, the youth being involved. Um, what? happened this last week that is very important in all, com in all the communities? What happened? 
Well, yes. But something happened. Everybody started returning to where? To a school. Right? Well, not everybody. Well, I would say kinder to grade, I mean, to 12. Most of them, I mean, school started. And uh, I think uh, it's very important for them to go back to school. Um, also, some of the people attending university, some of them already starting going to university. Some of them are start going to university maybe in the next week. So um, this is important weeks for these people, for families adjusting from the summer now back to, to the school time, right? So figure out how things are going to work out. So um, I would like you, as we start with our service today, to, to pray. We're going to pray for children for our youths, for all those who are attending university, for the parents, for the families who are adjusting on this new week as we start in this school year. So please bow our heads. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house, Father, your house of worship. I ask you, Father, you can be with each one of our families here in our church and those who are attending online, Father, also be with them. We ask you in a special way for our children in our church, those who are in school, we, we ask for the teachers. We ask you for those uh, going to university and those who are, I mean, going soon to university or college, be with them also as well, Father. Send your angels around them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Anyway, the title of today is very interesting, Unexpected Load. So I'm going to share a story with you. I would say around, how old am I? I would say around 30 years ago, I went camping with a church club. And you know, it was so exciting to, to go camping. Um, I know some of the youth up there, they're going camping too, so it's very nice when you go camping, you put, you know, you get ready, you put your sleeping bag, you stand your clothes, put it all together, you put as much things as you can, and eventually your backpack, it's so full that you sometimes it's barely to close. You can close it, right? And of course, you, I mean, thinking back there, we, my mom, she always put more things. Do you, do you took an extra towel? Put the extra towel. You put the extra pair of socks. You put that. And eventually, your backpack got so big that you need to carry it, right? So anyway, the time was there. Everybody was so excited to go camping. And the bus came to the church parking spot, and we start loading. So what do we load when we were camping? Backpacks, and then what? Tents, and then what? Shelter, and food, and all these items that you put for going camping, right? A boat, yes, you put boat if there is a lake or so. You put a boat. You put all the items that you need for, for going camping. So there we were, we, we rode, I think it was like a two hour drive to this place called Ogoiba. I mean, I, I think I have some pictures. Um, so we were getting, so Ogoiba, this is South Mexico, right? So uh, you see where the, I don't know, the pink dot, so the, the little village was on the right hand side. Well, my right hand side will be, yes, will be your right hand side. And we needed to walk from that town uphill to where the place was. So now, you, can you imagine backpacks going uphill? I mean, you're excited about it, but a little while, you start feeling the weight, right? Oh, no, you're excited, but you know, you're, now those places, it's in South Mexico, it's very humid. I mean, you're sweating, it's hot, and like Philippines, maybe, lady, hopefully, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, you're going, it's, you're sweating, you're going, I mean, you're excited about it, your friends are going with you, but then you're going that way. Finally, we got to the place. We started putting our luggages, we were told to put our backpacks in the center of this, um, I guess, meadow where on the side was a little creek, and, and the owners of the land were allowing us to stay there for the weekend. So finally, we put a center of items there. We, it was there. And eventually, the leader says, hey, we got to go back. Why? I just carry my backpack. Well, you need to run back for the food and the tents and the shelter. 
So now you're telling this to a 12, 13 year old boy or, 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 or girl, it's kind of like, oh no. So there you go back again, downhill, and start carrying everything all the way out there. We were exhausted. Anyways, we put all the food in the center. And all the backpacks and sleeping bags and all the tents on the outside. So, of course, kids being kids, looking for things to do, we, we saw that it was fun to jump on the, on the backpacks. So, we were, you know, we started running and jump in the backpacks. I don't know who they were, sleeping bags and, I mean, I mean, all those who have been Pathfinder, you know, things happen on campus all the time. <laughs> so anyway, we were doing that. But we knew to go on the side because in the middle was what? The food. So one boy, was not me, <laughs> one boy came running. And I guess, you know, being boys, you want to impress your peers, right? He was running. And he jumped, and he landed in the middle of it. In the foot, we put everything, but on the top, guess what it was? The eggs. So he jumped on top of the eggs. So now, of course, I remember the lady who came to help us to cook this weekend. He had a very, a very private conversation with this boy. <laughs> the good thing is you are part of it, but I didn't break the eggs, right? Someone else did. Anyways, finally the leader talked to all of us, and he says, now, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go back to town? No, we don't wanna go back to town. It's like 45 minutes to go downhill and then go back. Yes, you're gonna go. And the unexpected law was that we needed to go back, buy the eggs, and bring the eggs back again. Anyway, unexpected law. So the scripture reading um, was found, is found in Matthew 27, verse 32. And it says, I mean, you, you, hear, you hear it before. Now, as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Now, there's so many Bible characters, uh, so many persons, characters in the Bible. Uh, you know, New Testament, Old Testament. And sometimes we, we learn a lot from them. But this person that we're talking today, Simon of Cyrene, is mentioned in the Bible. I was looking like around three times. Not, we don't know much about him. But he had a special task on this event. And I'm convinced when we open the Bible and we read about stories, there's always something that we learn from it that the Bible and God want us to teach us to all of us and learn lessons from it. So, Simon Osirin. Now, before going to the actual story, something was happening before Simon, in this case, think about, is there. Can you tell me what is happening at the time? We can find, as you read before, from the beginning of chapter 27, what is happening? Chapter 27, 11 to 26. Jesus said before of Pilate. Jesus said before Pilate at this moment. So I'm going to go a couple of events there. And now, in verse 27, 15, now, uh, let me go back to it so you can follow, open, if you want to follow your Bibles here. 27.15. Now, at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. So this is what is happening, right? There's a feast, 
and the governor was going to release a prisoner. Now, there was a prison, and at that time, if you keep reading, Jesus is, is there to detain. And they ask, that's the, and the verse 20, 17 says, Therefore, when they gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now he had the options to the people. Who you want to release? We know the story. The people says, people says in verse 20, But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. So this is what's happening before going to the story of Simon of Cyrene. Okay? Now they release Barabbas, and Jesus is detained. Now, think about this. I want you to picture all this, where Simon of Cyrene is at this time. Okay? Soldiers mock Jesus. 27 verses 27 to 31. Verse 29. When they had, when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed on his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hell, king of Jews. So he didn't mock at this time. So many things were happening at this time. And on verse 30 it says, Then they spat on him and took him the reed and struck him on the head. So all this was happening before Simon of Cyrene come to the picture. And of course, verse 27, now, when, when, when before Jesus going to the crucifixion time, Simon of Cyrene comes to the story. Simon of Cyrene comes to the story. Verse 32, as they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. Who was Simon? What do we know from the Bible? Who was Simon of Cyrene? And Mark chapter 15, 21, give us a clue. Chapter, Mark chapter 15, verse 21. Then they compel a certain man, Simon of Cyrene, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. That's what it says, chapter. So who was Simon? So we know that he was from Cyrene. Cyrene was an ancient Greek city on the North African coast. And I mean, now it's in Libya, in the country of Libya. So if this place is protected by UNESCO, and you see the ruins there on the side. But also, Simon was a married man with have two sons. And I found this interesting in, in Desires of Ages, page 742. And it says, At this time, a stranger, Simon a Cyrenian, coming in from the country, meets the throng. He hears the task and rebuttery of the crowd. So hearing all this noise and uh, the king of the Jews and all this happening day, made way for him, he stops in astonishment at this scene. And as he expresses compassion, they seize him and place the cross upon his shoulder. Simon had heard of Jesus. His sons were already believers in the Savior. But he himself was not a disciple yet. That was, that was the, the disciples of Jesus telling us here. So think about this. The two sons, the two sons of Simon, they were already probably witness of the, the, the feeding of the four dozens. Probably they were, they were there when, when Jesus opened the eyes of the blind people or opened the ears of the deaf. He was there, probably they were there witnessing all these miracles of Jesus. And now these people, the sons of Simon, were believers of Jesus at this time. But Simon? The Bible says that not yet. He had heard probably the sons. Hey, this is the Messiah, Dad. But he went to see this moment. And that's what we're going to focus today. At the moment when Simon was sins, not by choice. He didn't offer. 
cease to carry a cross of Jesus Christ. And we're going to learn a few lessons. First lesson, Simon met Jesus at that time. Have you met Jesus in your life today? Amen. Do you want to meet Jesus? Simon, think about this. This is something that's happening in the Bible, the crucifixion. Um, the Savior was coming to be crucified to die for us. To, to give us eternal life, the choice for eternal life. And now Simon is at this moment meeting Jesus. And he's there to take an unexpected load that was the cross of Jesus. Simon, Simon met Jesus that day carrying the heaviest load of his life. We can find that there's three Bible verses. Matthew, well, Matthew 27 talks about his carrying the cross. Um, uh, we also talk about Mark, Mark chapter 15, 21 also. And Luke 23, 26 talks about the same thing. Maybe the circumstances were not the greatest at this time. But Simon is there to meet Jesus. Maybe the circumstances are not the best for us. But Simon decided to step and meet Jesus. And he's carrying the cross of Jesus Christ. Simon, at the moment that he's carrying the cross, he's at the presence of Jesus Christ. Because when we are in his presence, extraordinary things happen. So he's there. Think about this. He's in his presence. He's carrying the cross. I just picture myself. He see Jesus there. I mean, um, he's being um, beaten. He, he's looking at him with, with a crown of thorns. He, he sees that he's barely walking. He probably is losing um, blood that he's walking. And he's looking at him. And he's in his presence. We know when Jesus is there in his presence, things happen. What happened with the people of Israel living in Egypt? His presence was there. It was hot. A cloud was on top of them. It was night. A column of fire because his presence was there. Think about all these amazing stories in the Bible, when Jesus was there. They needed water. He provided water in the rock. The presence of God changes all in your life. Jesus changed Simon forever. Think about this. When Jesus came, Look at Zacchaeus. Did he change forever at that time with a country with a redeemer? He did. Think about Paul. Well, it was his name Saul. The light came. It was in the presence of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he changed too. Something extraordinary happened. Think about the life of Moses. When, when the burning bush was there and God was talking to him, he became the leader of a nation at that time. Think about Joseph. In those moments, these circumstances, these unbearable times, leaving his family, probably carrying a different cross, a different unexpected load, being at the presence of Jesus, remember the stories of his parents, remember his, uh, his uh, knowledge that was given to him from the Bible and the Scripture. He was a forever changed man. Don't you want to be changed? Just like Simon did at that time carrying this cross.
in the same book, in the same page, that is out of ages, page 742. The bearing of the cross to Calvary was a blessing to Simon. So he was carrying this cross, but this cross was a blessing to him. And he was ever grateful for this providence. It led him to take upon himself the cross of Christ from choice and ever cheerfully stand beneath his burden. This is found in Manuscript 41 from 1887. The cross, he, Simon, was for to bear, became the means of his conversion. His sympathies were deeply stirred in favor of Jesus. And the events of Calvary, he witnessed it all. And the words uttered by the Savior caused him to acknowledge that he was the Son of God. I'm going to um, start getting to a conclusion because we all have, have unexpected loss carrying in our shoulders. I know we do. We have different circumstances. We have different, uh, different uh, crosses, perhaps saints, carrying our shoulders. But when we walk on that journey, looking at Jesus Christ being crucified and also rise again, and he's in heaven looking, giving us eternal life, that cross, yes, it's a heavy burden, but it gives us hope to move forward. I'll share something. I was in high school, uh, and um, I was on a self-support school. And we were blessed by, at times, uh, groups. Americans or Canadians will come and build mission projects in the campus that we were at. But before these people, the builders, were coming to this place, we needed to build, either they were building a, an auditorium, a church, or a kitchen. And so we need to build the, um, how you call it, like, the foundation of this place. So in the place that we were at, we didn't have uh, big tractors or the big equipment to get the big rocks and put it there and use the foundation. We gotta do everything by hand. So uh, one of the strongest boys, which I was not there, <laughs> the strongest boys were in one corner there and all these rocks and with a big, um, I, I, it's not a rod, like a big bar just, you know, breaking the rocks and eventually all these smaller rocks, we have to carry them. And it was not close to it. We have to walk all the way to this place with this weight and dump. And oh, we were so happy. We were, we were working four hours. So every day, that was our job in preparation to these people who were coming to build, uh, 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 whether a church or an auditorium or classrooms or so. So for many months, we're coming here, breaking the rocks. We have to go and fill them in. And eventually, the whole place was filled, and all this weight and all these heavy rocks was in place. Eventually, these missionaries come and build this uh, building for us to, to attend. But what I, what I want you to say on this little analogy is when we were carrying all this, it was with a purpose. We were carrying these heavy rocks because something was going to be built on top of this bunch of rocks. What I want you to do is that we all have rocks and an unexpected lot to carry. But there's always a plan of salvation and redemption for us to carry on. Because when you carry on, this foundation, Jesus will be their presence to you. Are you carrying some burden in your life? 
perhaps unexpected, are things at home or at work going out well, perhaps, unexpected, and you are carrying that in your shoulders? Are your studies, younger generation or, or adults who are, who are those who are at school, are your studies heavy, challenging your faith, challenging your faith? Are you discouraged or lonely? Are you carrying a cross that is hard to carry on? That cross and that weight bear the cross like Simon did because it crosses the life inflicts upon our shoulders. They become a blessing if Jesus is near to us. I found this on a devotional by Pastor Mark, uh, Mark Finley. Our scars become stars. Our trials become triumphs because it is in the pain of life that we meet the Savior. Brothers and sisters, as we move forward, there will be load to carry, unexpected load to carry. But if we learn from Simon and we go close to that cross and we carry that cross and we're looking at Jesus at that moment, we will be changed forever, for eternity. So that's um, our conclusion. And, and to move forward, please. If we can all stand and sing hymn number 476. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today, Father, on this special day, your Sabbath. Father, we wanted to be like you. We know that there's burdens, there's unexpected load in our shoulders. But help us to learn from the Bible, the story of Simon, that we can carry that cross looking at you. We can carry this load, load in our, on our shoulders looking at you, Father. We ask you, Father, you can bless our or, or church member, or families. We ask you for, for the children of the church. We ask you for the youth. 
We ask you for those um, young adults who are in university, Father, that you can be with them. I also pray for those who are online, Father, that you can be with them as well. We ask you for those who are sick, Father, be with them as well. Restore them, Father. We ask you this on the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.